Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, and welcome to another very exciting tutorial in After Effects. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at creating some cool stroke effects for some titles, and it should be a lot of fun. Now, you know, we're not blowing anything up or creating energy balls, but if you gotta make some, you know, high impact titles, you know, stroke's a really cool way to uh, make it pop, make it stand out, and these are Vegas lights. You know, you put some lights around something and people just want to go there. That's how, you know, that's the idea behind Las Vegas, actually. In fact, you know how much electricity it takes to light all of the lights in Las Vegas? Well, neither do I, but uh, I'm going to look it up maybe later. Maybe I'll find it on a Snapple cap and uh, like a little Snapple fact. That's where I get most of my information. If it's not on the bottom of a beverage cap, then I don't know about it. And if it's not on the bottom of a beverage cap, then it's probably not that important. Anyway, moving on, we're going to create this uh, cool title thing. We're going to be using some various effects, but real quick, you should check out the Video Copilot blog. We have a project file as well as a quick little tutorial walkthrough. And uh, we use some of the similar techniques um, as we do in this tutorial, but I thought I would um, focus on it just for a quick tutorial because um, it's a little bit more generic of a technique. So. Let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm saying is you should watch both of them. Now, what do you guys want to do? You want to do the invent title or do you want to do the gizmo Las Vegas title? Gizmo? Invent? All right, we'll do that one. Which one? This one. Okay, we'll do the invent one. Half of you are probably thinking, wow, that's the one I picked. And the other half are probably thinking, well, that was my second choice. All right, so we'll take the text tool here and uh, we'll just type in here rocket. And, um, you know, we'll scale it up a bit, hit the uh, title safe, and uh, you kind of center it just right. Now, the thing about this technique is we're using strokes. So a stroke is basically an outline. So we're going to try to create an outline of our text. So we'll take the text here, and we'll come over here, and we'll change this bottom color, which is a stroke color, and uh, we'll set that to blue. And we'll set the fill color to no fill. Perfect. And then right here, we can control the size of the stroke. This actually is cool because it fills in and it looks like a solid font. It's almost like a bold version of this font. Now, if I duplicate the layer, Control D, or if you just choose uh, Edit, Duplicate, we can make copies of it. And then if we offset the settings a little bit, then we can start creating outlines that are bigger than the previous outline. So first, let's just turn up the width and then let's duplicate the layer, Control D again. And we'll set this bottom layer, number two, so we'll forget about the first layer. And we'll set this track mat to alpha inverted mat. So what's happening now is it's creating a subtraction of the layer above it. So if we were to make it a little bit bigger, then it's creating an outline that's larger than our initial outline. So it's pretty much creating layers on layers. Now we have all these layers, so how are we going to link them together? So that's the trick. So we'll take this top layer, or the first layer I should say, and we'll put it on top. And we'll name this, um, name this. That's going to be confusing. I'm confused. That's okay. What are we doing? Right. Um, and what we can do is we can link the text source to the other layers. So if we go into the layer here, text, source text, and hit Alt, hold down Alt, and then click on the stopwatch, then we can pick whip the source text. And then we'll do it again for this layer. We can also copy that. So if we take this, choose Edit, Copy Expression, and then choose Edit, Paste. And then, if we change the first layer's text, all of the layers are going to update. So it's, you know, not a big deal if you only have to change two, but in some of these comps, we're talking about upwards of three layers, and that could be a lot of work. I mean, obviously there's more than three, but I was just trying to be clever. Um, never works out. So you know what? It actually does work out. When I'm not recording, I say the most clever things, and then when I start recording, ah. Uh, Oh well. Um, let's go ahead and add some more strokes here. So we'll take these two layers and edit, duplicate, and uh, we'll play around. So if we take the top layer, we'll move the stroke size up, and then we'll take the one below it and then move it beyond that. So 
that's how you can create some space in between the strokes. And then, you know, we could take the various copies, change the color, you know, and really start to do some cool stuff. So real quick, let's make a background layer, new solid, make comp, okay. And we'll add a quick gradient. So uh, generate uh, ramp. So right there at the bottom. And uh, we'll set it to a radial ramp. And uh, maybe we'll do like a gray color and a darker gray. And then we'll extend it out and bring the middle color in. So standard procedure here. Put this on the bottom, call this background, and we're good to go. So let's make some of these 3D. So hit F4. And we'll just turn on the 3D layer switch for our text layers. And then we'll create a new light, a point light. And we'll hit OK. So this will just give our text a little bit more life, you know, so it's not just a flat looking title. All right, so let's go and work on the look of this title. So I'm just going to take our top text and just shut it off for a second. And then we have this blue one, and I might make it a little bit bigger and then bring the inside in just a touch. And then we have this gray one on the outside. Let's push it out a little bit further. And maybe we'll change the color real quick to like a dark green. And then we'll change this color to more of a light uh, yellow. Like a greenish color. And maybe bring this one in a little bit. All right, now we'll take another copy of the stroke and control D. And we'll push this one even further. So we'll make it white. And let's push it out more. And just have like a big um, outline. Now, one of the cool things that you can do in After Effects is adjust layers to tell them whether or not to accept lights. And it can do a really interesting thing. So in this case, I could say, take this white line, hit AA, and say, accept lights to off. And so everything else is affected by the light, but the white layer isn't. So it almost makes it look like it's brighter or it's, uh, it's illuminated. So if I go back um, to this example, we have this top layer, um, the red gizmo. Let's see, uh, right here. Well. It's set to accept lights, but if I hit AA and set it to off, it almost now looks like it's illuminated, you know, with all of the lights around it. So maybe you're making a neon effect or something like that. So definitely something we're going to be playing around with. So coming on back, uh, we've got the white text. Maybe we'll duplicate this again and do a black version and uh, also just push that. Uh, out to the outline. But let's go and duplicate another one here. So we'll just take this, uh, control D, and maybe we'll scale this one down a little bit. We'll change it to like a light, light green, and thin it in a bit, and also the top one. So almost put like a stroke inside of this one. Okay, so that's getting there. All right, so another quick thing I want to do is create a bit of a shadow. So to do that, we'll just duplicate any one of the layers and we'll change it to a different color and put it down here on the bottom. And what we want to do is set this one to be black because it's going to be a shadow. So we'll choose effect, uh, let's see, radial blur, and uh, we'll set this to centered zoom and turn it up a little bit. And it kind of creates like a streaking effect. And if we move the position really, really high, um, you know, we can just drag this. Then it almost creates um, a bit of a shadow. So if we shut all this off here, um, maybe turn up the stroke size. Actually, let's set this to what's fading zoom. Perfect. So that kind of pushes it away from where, it, where the source is. So this is starting to look pretty good. Now I'm going to duplicate it because I want to have two shadow layers and one of them is going to just be a little bit smaller. 
and then we may even move it down a little bit. And then we'll take the bottom layer and just lower the opacity. And another fun thing you can do is the layers are 3D. So we could take, you know, a couple of the strokes and move them forward on the z-axis. So as we move these forward, or actually I probably want to bring maybe uh, maybe this one forward. I mean, I think you just want to offset various ones. Uh, maybe even take the front text. You know, if it were a different color, we could say bring it forward a bit. And, you know, that almost gives it a more of a 3D look. We could add a quick uh, alpha, bevel alpha, to give it, you know, like a highlight. You know, so there's definitely some flexibility with with this technique for getting, you know, a more interesting look. Now, one other thing I want to show you was using the Vegas effect. So, in this example, we kind of put lights around the back. So, even though we didn't do it in this example, we'll just sort of combine the ideas. So, let's just take uh, one of the layers. We'll take the top one. Well, actually, we need one that has the expression linked to it. So, we'll just duplicate this one. We'll set the color to pink so that it's different than the other ones. And we'll choose Effect, uh, Generate, and Vegas down at the bottom. And it's a really cool effect. Now, the one problem with it is if you have it applied to a 3D layer and you have a light in your scene, just hit AA and make sure Accept Lights is set to Off. And that way it will render. We'll set it to Transparent. And uh, maybe we'll make it white. And then we can start playing around with some of the options. So what it does is it creates sort of like lines around, uh, you know, the contours of the shape. So you can have a lot, you can have a few, you can do uh, dotted lines or, you know, like a coupon line where you save money on like a haircut, um, you know, but you shouldn't be going to that place anyway because they always screw up your hair. But we can also make it into dots. So if we turn the length down, then we actually have the little dots from the Orion um, production company. Now, let's see here. Let's turn up the width and the hardness. And then we'll shut off that. And then we'll turn up the stroke amount so that the, the balls will be almost behind our text layer. A little bit more. Okay. And then we'll set, uh, let's see, we'll bring the segments down. We'll make a few less. We're getting cheap. We can't afford to have that many light bulbs. All right, cool. Now, I see that our black layer is pulled forward quite a bit. So we might just push that, uh, push that back a little bit. And remember, when you're moving one of the layers of the stroke, make sure you move both of them if you're moving them in 3D space so that they go together. All right. So back to our Vegas lights. Maybe we'll turn up the width some more. And uh, then we'll turn the stroke amount down so they're kind of peeking out from behind the title. So that looks good. Now let's add a quick glow. So effect, uh, stylize, glow. And we may need to uh, turn some of this up. So we'll turn up the intensity here. Um, and then maybe we'll duplicate the glow. And, uh, you know, we could play around with the color of the glow. Anyway, you can play around. Um, lastly, you might add uh, some color correction or even a glow on top of everything just to kind of give it a little bit more of a, you know, a polished look. Maybe bring the intensity down a little bit. Now, we have this interior green color. And by the way, you just kind of shut layers on and off to find stuff. And we might bring that down so it's a little bit warmer. Let's see. Something like that. Perfect. And if you adjust the layers into 3D space, then you can actually do, you know, some some things like having, you know, a little bit of a transition. I put um, a sweep on the back card just to kind of make it look like uh, maybe it had a gleam on it a little bit. So this layer right here, there's a light sweep. And I just animated the position 
so that it just wipes across. So pretty straightforward. You know, in this example, we just have uh, some small dots on the inside. So just use as like a design style. And then we have a really thick stroke on the outside, but the opacity is lowered a lot so that it kind of blends in with the background. Now, this was kind of the first test of the idea and see how fast it could work. And um, didn't look that good, but figured, you know, with a little bit of work, could uh, add some polish. So I'm going to go ahead and include this project file. Um, so if you download the project for this tutorial, you can kind of play around with these different um, effects. And here's the really cool thing. If you come up here to the edit layer, so just like we created the name this layer, if we double click on that, it becomes a text selection and we can change it to whatever we want. So we could do like robot and then hit enter and then all of the layers are going to update. And then what if you want to change the font or anything? Well, for that, we want to make sure we select all of the layers. So if you hold down shift, select all the layers and then come over here to your character, you can just change the font, you know, just uh, type in a new font. And again, everything that you've sort of designed will um, update with that new font. Now, be careful. You don't want to pick a horrible font that uh, looks really bad. But if you find a cool one, you know, you'll be surprised at, you know, the, uh, the flexibility of text that actually looks like you spent some time working on it, which clearly we didn't. We spent about five minutes. And most of the time I was just telling you about this time I went to this um, carnival. So just be thinking about how you can work smarter, you know, when you're creating these different types of titles and things where you don't have to spend an enormous amount of time, um, you know, doing repetitive work when you can maybe link things together with uh, simple expressions and just the idea of keeping everything synced together like my favorite band. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, doing what it takes. All right, well, I'm Andrew Kramer, and hope you guys enjoyed this. We will see you next time.